How's it going, everyone? Uh, so I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about my journey uh, doing applied improv in China. Uh, so before I begin, I just want to get a sense of where you guys are about your knowledge of China. So we're going to play a little bit of word association. Uh, uh, so who, who has actually uh, lived in China before? Who has actually lived in China? All right, we've got a couple, a couple of you in the house. Who has actually been to China, traveled to China? All right, a few more of you. Okay, so for the rest of you guys, uh, when I say China, I'm going to point in your general direction, and you're going to say the first word that comes to mind, okay? So just be real honest, uh, first word that comes to mind. So China. Students. Students. China. Trade negotiations. Trade negotiations. Very good. China. Face products. Face products. China. C. C. China. Huawei, China, restaurant. restaurant, and finally, China, crowded, crowded. Yeah. <laughs> yes, those are all, uh, those are all our, our preconceptions, our ideas of China, our perceptions of China, um, and I want to share with you uh, some learnings that I've had uh, in my nine years, so I'm based in Beijing, in my nine years uh, living and teaching improv in China. Uh, so. Uh, the first learning, uh, and, and this, is, this is very immediate, uh, the first learning that I had is, is that China is not a monolith. All right? uh, and, and you guys, if, if you ever visited China, uh, that will be very obvious. Uh, so China, uh, in, in Western media, it's referred to as Beijing this, Beijing that. It's presented as this kind of top-down totalitarian power. Uh, and, and in many senses, uh, you know, that's, one, that's one facet of China. Uh, but China is also dazzlingly diverse. Uh, it, it's a country of 1.4 billion people. Um, you know, if, if you've ever had Chinese food, you know there's Sichuan food, or Sichuan, as we call it here. Uh, there's Cantonese cuisine. Uh, but there's also Yunnan food from southwest China, which is, which is almost like Southeast Asian cuisine. It's, it's so vibrant uh, and so fresh. There's Xinjiang food um, from the northwest, which is almost like Turkic cuisine. Uh, so China is, is this massive country with so many differences, uh, it's a land of contrast. And, 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 for, and for me, I'm, I'm based in Beijing, the capital. Uh, it's a city of 25 million people. Uh, it's got a per capita GDP of about 20,000 US dollars per, per year. Uh, so that's about the equivalent of Portugal. Uh, but when I travel to, uh, for instance, a rural province uh, like Gansu uh, in, in, in the middle of China, it's got a per capita GDP of, of $4,000 uh, a year, and that's the equivalent of, of Albania, right? So that gives you a sense of, of, how, of how different uh, places within China are. And, and you know, uh, sometimes, you know, I, I like to say, you know, when I go to Shanghai, I'll, I'll dress up, uh, and, and when I'm in Beijing, I'll dress down. Uh, so that's superficially uh, some differences, uh, but there, there are deeper differences, uh, you know, between the coastal regions uh, of China, uh, where, where foreign investment uh, trade has, has really flourished, and, and the inland provinces, uh, where, where people are relatively uh, poorer. Um, last year, I was uh, in, in Hunan province. Uh, so has anyone had Hunan food before? It's very spicy. Uh, so I spent a week there. Uh, my stomach did not enjoy that. Uh, but I was teaching, I was teaching improv at, uh, a girl, at adolescent girls' camp. Uh, and so this camp uh, was trying to provide opportunities for, for rural girls to, to find uh, ways to express themselves uh, you know, when they're hitting puberty. Uh, it's a time of immense changes. Uh, and so this, this was a camp uh, aimed at you know, kind of filling the gaps uh, that, that were absent in, in the official school curriculum. And so you know, when I arrived, I had all these ideas what I was going to do with improv and and how I was going to get them to express themselves. But first, you know, language was an issue. Um, so, you know, if you guys know about the Chinese language, it's one of the last pictographic languages out there. All right, so that means, uh, you know, you can't use an alphabet, right? It's not based on sounds. Chinese uh, is a script that has unified hundreds of different languages around the country. Uh, it's, it's as if French, Spanish speakers, Italians, Portuguese could all write to one another, but their languages are very different. So, so that's Chinese in a bubble. 
Uh, and so I was in this rural area not really being able to communicate. Um, and so spending three days, um, oh, first day was real rough. Day two, we made some progress. Uh, we got our bodies opening up. And by day three, um, you know, these girls made a play uh, about their development, about their growth uh, as, as young girls, um, and, and weaved in interpretive dancing. Uh, there was a story about, um, about having their period and about transitioning into adulthood. And it was this beautiful moment, um, but it was, uh, to me, it, 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 uh, it symbolized kind of the, the, the diversity <laughs> that's found in China and, and the challenges that, are, that, are, uh, that face people uh, who, you know, who, who go to China and expect you know, this monolith. Um, so, so localization in China doesn't mean just uh, you know, adapting to, to one thing, it means localizing across uh, uh, different regions. Um, so the second learning that I've had uh, teaching improv in China uh, is that the Chinese uh, education system uh, isn't all that it's cracked up to be. And I remember in 2016, uh, the, um, the P does anyone know about the PISA scores, the uh, performance assessment for international uh, students? Uh, and so in 2016, um, PISA released uh, rankings for, for the top nations in, in science, math, and, and reading. And sadly, the US uh, was not in the top 20 for any of those, any of those rankings. Uh, but sh students from Shanghai were consistently ranked at the top of the list. And, and that led to kind of a national soul searching on our part uh, for, for Americans, uh, but also this kind of elevated view of Chinese education uh, and I remember seeing, um, I remember seeing this British, this BBC show that, that took Chinese teachers and, and put them in the UK and, you know, kind of showing what they could do with, with uh, British students. Uh, short story, uh, not so well. Didn't, didn't go so good. <laughs> uh, but, you know, similarly in China, there, there is a, there's a national soul searching uh, about the, the effects of, of the Chinese education system. Right, uh, it's over the over the last few decades. It's produced brilliant uh, mathematicians, engineers, scientists, uh, and and this style of education. It's it's rote learning, right? It's test based, exam based. Um, when you graduate high school, you have to do something called the Gaokao. So imagine the SAT, but basically this one test determining everything for the rest of your life. That's the Gaokao. It's a three day exam, um, highly pressurized. Uh, I remember seeing one, one image of, of students hooked up to an IV while, while taking the test. Um, and so this is the environment that Chinese students are in, uh, in the education system there. And so uh, when I do improv with these kids, um, you can imagine how, how liberating it is, how, uh, how much of a refuge it is from their everyday grind. Um, and, and I see parents eyes light up when, when they're able to communicate with their kids for the first time in what seems like years, you know, uh, that they're not just tied to their phones. And, and that, I think that is the impact that Applied Improv has had um, for me uh, d doing, doing this kind of stuff, theater-based education in China. That's, that's the kind of uh, impact that I think improv can have for, for millions of, of, of students in China. And, you know, if there's one thing about China, you know, it's that you have a lot of people, and you have uh, opportunities um, for everyone uh, to make a big impact over there. Uh, number three, uh, I would say my third learning uh, uh, in, in my time in, in doing implied improv in China uh, is that Chinese people are very pragmatic. It's a very pragmatic culture. Um, and so, you know, when I'm communicating with, with clients, when I'm communicating with, with uh, parents and educators, uh, I make sure that I, I present the value. Uh, if, if any of you guys have been to Gary Hirsch's uh, workshop, uh, you know, meeting your clients' needs, right? That's very important in China. Uh, you gotta present the value right up front, uh, sometimes along with the price. Uh, so that's, that's very important in China. And I remember communicating with parents especially uh, about their kids' uh, 
improv education. There's always the emphasis on what, what does this translate to uh, in real world skills, okay? So you've talked to me about communication, about listening, about teamwork. Uh, okay, what, what, uh, you know, what, what, can that, what can I get them in terms of a higher Gaokao score or, or a higher uh, English score? So, so there's this need to, to, tie, to tie what we're doing with applied improv uh, to real world results, uh, which is a challenge which is a challenge, but it's, it's a very interesting one. And you know, many times I've had to turn parents down who are sending their kids uh, with literally no English skills um, and saying, hey, you know, improv plus English, maybe they can, they can learn a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work uh, if, if kids don't understand the language that they're being taught, right? Uh, so, so pragmatism uh, and, and displaying value is, is very important. Um, and so, uh, I've actually had a longer had a longer talk about my learnings, um, but right now I just feel like recent events um, make me want to spend the rest of this time talking about something that's a little bit more personal for me. Um, so I'm uh, I'm a first generation immigrant. Uh, my dad came to America in 1988. Um, his father uh, was killed during the Cultural Revolution. Um, and so he came in pursuit of the American dream. Um, and, you know, in the, last, uh, in the last nine years that I've been in Beijing, uh, doing improv and, and teaching improv, I've been really proud of, of passing on this truly American art form, you know, in, in, in my native land. And so... Um, I've been really, I've been really hurt by what's been happening in our in our country recently. Um, this idea that immigration is this thing that, you know, is 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 negative, has a negative impact on our society. And uh, I remember uh, reading a book by Amartya Sen. He's a he's a Nobel Prize winning uh, Indian political scientist. Uh, and in his book Identity and Violence, uh, he talks about um, he talks about conflict between people uh, as, as the result of us boiling down our identities to these unitary labels, right? Um, I'm Christian, you're Muslim. I'm Chinese, you're American. You know, I'm black, you're white. These, these unitary labels uh, have a way of becoming diametrical opposites. Um, but instead, I think what improv has taught me personally is that we're all so capable of stepping into different roles, of connecting one, with one another. Um, and it's what I find most beautiful about doing improv, about teaching improv, is, is this human connection. Um, and I don't want to make this too political. I don't want you guys to, to, to go out there and vote and, and do all. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not trying to make this an overly political message. Um, I just wanted to kind of express my bit. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a term for, for someone like me in Chinese. Uh, it's called hua chao. Uh, it means overseas Chinese, or literally it means Chinese bridge. Um, because a few hundred years ago, um, you know, when, when mass waves of, of Chinese uh, immigrants were going to other countries, um, you know, they were seen as, as bridges of Chinese culture. Um, you know, people that could connect different places. Um, and, and I see my own role uh, as, as a bridge between China and the U.S. Um, but I think all of you are also bridges. You know, all of you have multifaceted identities. You know, you, you are so many different identities in, in, in one person. And, you know, instead of focusing on diversity as as the differences between people, what about celebrating the differences within us um, and really connect with one another that way? So thank you all so very much. Thank you. That's been my time. <laughs>